Thomas Stimson and welcome to our exhibition which is Within Nature and I thought there'd be no better way to start the exhibition than showing planet Earth, um, probably the biggest landscape that, um, that I've painted. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to do the exhibition and this planet provides everybody with the moment to have a look at the landscapes that sit within it but also works alongside Venka with this collaboration of the animals that live within this planet. My name is Venka Reitz and um, uh, I would like to welcome you to our exhibition Within Nature uh, where Tom and I, we work um, together. Uh, Tom provides the, the habitat on our planet and I am portraying the animals and uh, their character and actually in their nature we find our human nature. Tom and I, we are putting together our paintings in pairs and we try to um, colour coordinate them to have um, a similar palette. So in this case, with these two, Tom did start with a still life. Yeah, so this is a still life that was produced using oils on a canvas and it was to capture uh, the juxtaposition of a lemon and a jug, so one muted in the background and the vibrant colour of the lemon. Um, we'd had a discussion about potential what uh, animals or insects would go along with this and um, found great enjoyment in this still life. So hopefully it sort of captures the, the element of the, the natural element of the, the lemon um, and then even from the earth, the clay of the pot. And um then we were thinking uh, the, who could, you know, what kind of insect would crawl along and um, we were thinking this could be a fine habitat for a bee and to choose this, the format of the bee is intentional because um, the bee has to be heard. So imagine to be really face to face to a bee. So the bee has the same size as a head, as a human head. And um, if you have a bee in that dimension, you would much rather listen to it. And um, when you uh, also when you come closer, the little dots they are out of gold and they represent the honey because we the bee can be without us, but we cannot be without the bee. So um, the, the honey and the work of the bee is worth gold. And that's why you say uh, the honey of the bee and the lemon, so the honey and the lemon. started with the animal, uh, we were um, diving in Greece with the octopus and um, observing it and <clears throat> the more and more uh, we observed it, it was very clear that you know very often the octopus is represented with its um, eight limbs and it's kind of you know crazy and, uh, and very extraterrestrial being. But uh, observing it, you see that the octopus is a very highly intelligent um, creature, uh, fascinating being a master and camouflaging, although colorblind. Um, the color uh, receptors are all on the skin, so it is um, it's an absolute fascinating um, creature, and. Um, 
and Tom did do the habitat for it. Yeah, so we a lot of this was done over Zoom. So the idea was that we would. Um, I saw the picture come through of the octopus and wanted to create a landscape that would enable it to sort of sit back from the main image, which would the main painting, which is of the of the animal and the creature. So. Um, I looked at the types of habitat that uh, octopus occupy and found that these sort of coral and a lot of the grasses that flow in the sea I've put in the backdrop here and some of the sort of dark and shadows are ideally the habitat where the octopus would occupy. So that was the idea to be slightly muted from the main picture um, and to be slightly set back so that the, the image of the animal becomes the, the, the main point. Um, this was done again in oils. Um, lightly coloured over, um, wiped off and then reapplied again. So there's a sort of three or four passes that were done during that, that uh, mm -hmm. painting session. Great, so uh, we did a lot of research for the different habitat and animal, but animals, but also um, while we were doing it, we were seeing that, um, for instance, this frog, um, it does represent actually the also a lot of human the human nature. So just the look and the expression is um, you know a human does understand it because we kind of have this expression also in us. Yeah, I think the eyes are the gateway to the soul. So we always talk about the eyes being a really important part of an animal but also equally as important as a human. So the animal that was created here, the frog, um, from a landscape perspective it was to look at, you know, within the country that we've got here but across the globe, but, um, you know, habitats that have now become derelict are now being reclaimed by insects, animals and creatures and uh, that was just, a, a, a again, a look and not to the colours that Venka was using um, to try and capture that in this, um, in this picture of Mocott Castle. Uh, so here we have a typical uh, watering point for the animals that uh, you're going to hear about next. Um, and this is a sort of flat um, bottom river, you've got the stone, you've got uh, the sort of rugged uh, landscape to the, to, the, to the rear of the picture and this was done again in oils and it was painted um, to try and capture a, uh, maybe an evening or a um, you know, dusk in this, in this environment. And what I'll do now is hand over to Ben Krull to talk about the animals. Yes, so this, this trio is set up you know, to reflect again the different oh, colour palette. And uh, this is a um, pangolin, a pangolin you find in Asia as, as well as in Africa. And uh, <clears throat> they are toothless animals and uh, they are hunted for their um, scales. They are filled with, you know, they are out of carotene. And um, so they get, uh, you know, since all these years, these scales did protect them against the predators. But now the human comes along and they just pick them up and uh, sell them on the market before they take actually all the scales off and they have the white skin and they just barely uh, lay them on the tables and are sold. So uh, our exhibition is also to, um, you know, to highlight and to, you know, this awareness of the, uh, of nature and the animals within or on our planet. And, um, what I did not know actually before, and it was a friend seeing the exhibition, she, she told me that actually the, uh, the gold that I used actually to lift it up as a jewel, um, she said that for the moment actually the price of gold and the price of the carotene scale is the same for the moment. So, um, which give them the, the painting more value or more reason being. And uh, the bison has a very, um, well, actually a happy story because it was almost hunted down to extinction by the um, modern American civilization and the farming. And, um, but then uh, 
during the 20th century, it gained again in population and it's not at all, um, you know, uh, vulnerable or close to extinction. So that is a good, a positive sign. So with this painting of the horse, um, I framed it um, on three sides, but the composition uh, is in a way that it's the body of the horse that is finishing the frame. And with that, I wanted to say that um, in the in the history, the human horse history, the domestication of the horse. Um, there is um, it's an interesting relationship. The, obviously, the human would like to enclose it and have it. And, but I think that the horse has also a say. The horse likes actually to be with the humans. And uh, don't you have that experience? Yeah, so um, first of all, this stunning painting sort of captures really uh, a moment where I undertook some uh, equine therapy and during that time um, I had a I suppose a very moving experience of being uh, close to horses. I, as a child I wasn't too keen on uh, being close to horses and never had those experiences and it was really the opportunity to go and um, undertake a, a sort of a week's course and during that time uh, the first part of the course was to stand and uh, we had to look out into the field and I was a bit unsure what he was doing but we was told to go and connect with the horses and I didn't really understand what connection means um, but there were six of us stood along this fence line and I bowed my head and looked out into the field and there was about probably 10, 12 horses in the field and there was one that sort of stood out and I looked at it and thought about it but didn't really think much else um, at that moment we was told to then bow our heads and for a couple of minutes then I just sort of looked down, closed my eyes and, and stood in a certain way and after I suppose a couple of minutes I felt that presence of something near me and it was during that time that I then was told to open our eyes, I looked up and this horse was a bit like this now, very close to me, um, looking directly at me and what it had done, it had mirrored the way I was standing so I was stood in this particular way with my foot forward, my head bowed, and it had its head bowed and its foot forward. And the instructor was with us, he just said, um, she had a notebook and pen and said, is there anything you can connect with this horse? And I just said, well, it's quite strange, but while my head was bowed, I got some different colours coming in and, uh, you know, just felt, um, you know, just felt connected to whatever was, was near me. Um, so she made some notes and we, we had a, um, an opportunity then to sort of stand. And this was the white, this was the mare of that uh, collection of 10, 12 horses. So... Um, I sort of stood there and was sort of stunned by the experience. It was quite moving and really felt that connection. And then after that, we then came back and we did um, a bit longer. And we were then at the point where we we went into the field with the horse. Um, and over the three, four days, we then, the horse would come out and actually put its head on its, on the, its chest. Um, we would be close to the horses and we would do various sort of exercises where we'd sort of walk around with the horses, groom the horses, and then we did a, uh, uh, one uh, exercise where we went, got into a field and we was in a, it's a big sort of round enclosure and the horse was that total trust you have between each other and it then followed through this little course where there was a little fence had to step over and some other uh, ornaments to move around. Um, and it did that, not under any sort of, any rain or anything it just followed so that uh, opportunity to do that was an amazing experience a very moving experience and uh, obviously I understand the main connection now with horses so uh, I've got a very fond place in my heart. This uh, painting, I would like to um, highlight.
highlight actually um, the duality of the, the human and the animal world, and that definitely um, the human is not has not always the upper hand for the wisdom or how we treat uh, our planet. So we should learn plenty from those guys. And I would a look in her eyes uh, shows that um, you know she has a lot to say. And gorilla, indeed, they. They are a very civilized civilization. I mean, a civilized group of um, of beings. They have developed apparently uh, even a sort of religion. So um, uh, we do not know much about them, really. We think we do, but I just want to highlight um, the animals and uh, in comparison to us, superhumans. So uh, with Venka painting this grin, it was great to see it as it got sent through to me and wanted to try and um, capture a feeling of the environment that uh, this beautiful creature uh, lives within. And by doing that, it was to look at the colours that Venka has used and also to try and um, connect uh, the landscape uh, with the gorilla. And if I step back here, you can see uh, the images here. Uh, the one here to the right, it shows the trees in the background and the plains that they would graze on uh, and come out to, and obviously the scarcity of water that we have uh, in these hot environments. And then also on the side here, we have the sort of a, a misty look used again with oil on canvas um, that tries to catch that sort of misty morning where you'd imagine a family of gorillas uh, potentially down by the, uh, within the jungle maybe feeding, maybe you get water um, and that hopefully captures that with the colours and the muted colours to really to show the presence of the, the large painting and to have these sort of paired back as a, uh, to show the location environment that they live within. would like to to show with the, with actually with the portraits um, of the animal is uh, their uh, to show their character and uh, especially the the eye is very expressive so um, fox and the horse it's more a gentle but curious look we, yes we want to highlight with that there. Um, the character and the existence, how the animals go through Earth through, on our planet. Yeah. And um, for me, uh, when I saw Venka's uh, pictures, it was important to then try and pick up some of the colours. So with these lovely watercolours, um, again, I've used oils, um, my sort of go-to medium, and uh, try to look at it and see the, the lovely colours of the blues in the horse at the top and then the, the sort of golden colours and the yellows above, and just try to pick up some of those in this sort of coastal beach scene where you can imagine the horses running down the beach. Um, so there's some blues in there, some greens. Um, and then across on the other side, we just imagine this sort of woodland forest of the fox you know, and its habitat moving through the woodland, uh, normally out into the, the rest of society, um, scavenging amongst bins. So, you know, it's that thing of how animals have, um, with humans, how they've moved into their space and how the foxes have had to adapt to, to move out and uh, into urbanisation. So, it shows the, the connection, how they live together in tandem, but that natural habitat as the woodland is, is something that they're used to. So uh, this is an oil on canvas. It was a it's a typical village scene that was painted um, quite near to where I, I live, and I wanted to try and capture sort of daily life of the interaction of the people playing cricket, but also the amount of wildlife. So there's a there's lots of sort of fishing lakes and 
uh, bird life that's associated around this area and um, that that image I suppose conjures up the traditional sort of blackbirds, robins and other birds that frequent um, woodland area. Um, I'll hand over now to Ben who will tell you about the nest below. Well I um, followed the colour palette from Tom and I used it to do the nest which is inspired by a quail egg nest, but it is actually um, artistically uh, designed just to match um, the colors that uh, Tom used in his, um, in his painting. Mandrel has a place in this collection because um, uh, it has um, restricted habitat more and more because of the deforestation, as well as um, because of the fishing in the uh, oceans uh, in Africa on the west coast as well as on the east coast. The villages they do not have enough food. The fishing villages just don't find enough food anymore. So uh, they are um, going now into the bush and they're looking for bush meat. So the mandrels, they are um, living in big numbers and it's an easy hunt with the gun to have a meal for the whole village. So some years ago, the numbers were very stable, but it goes rapidly down. So they are not on the vulnerable list yet, but they will be very soon if it continues like that. So from Fenker's mandrel painting, which has got vibrant colours and obviously the, you know, the eyes that, um, that, that follow you through everywhere, um, I wanted to try and pick up some of the colours and the idea was to look at the blues and the yellows and really that point about the deforestation was to try and capture that sort of vast space where there's forest is in the background and the sort of the looming landscape as it, as it changes it moves towards the forest uh, which is obviously the habitat for the mandrel so the idea is to pick up again oil on the canvas to to capture some of the colors and pick those up um, and to really bring awareness to the, the deforestation of these areas that these animals live in With this portrait of the gorilla, his name is Plato, I would like to portray that um, the uh, animals have thoughts in a in a life and uh, which is reflected in his face and um, and we should uh, listen to uh, what they know how to uh, how to treat the planet. So here is a landscape that was painted again oil on canvas and it works in relationship with the grill that was painted by Venka. Um, the ultimate lesson I suppose is that uh, as the animals within nature that we learn to respect it, live within it and be part of it. So thank you very much. <laughs>